Mr. Mujib Ahmed, welcome. Mujib is a former is a former senior software engineer and is a radical facilitator and mentor. His eagerness to understand the link between mind, body, and spirit encouraged him to learn several alternative modalities like Reiki, hypnotherapy, regression, and inner child therapy, NLP, and breathwork. He is the founder of Roots and Bright and uses this platform to help people bridge the gap between the unconscious and subconscious minds. Today, Mujib will be sharing with us his insights on emotional well-being of children using psychological-based spiritual insights which will help us in building a strong foundation for our children to cope with real-world challenges. Over to you, Mujib. Thank you. Thank you, Sienna. And uh, welcome all. Uh, it's a Sunday morning. Uh, it's a cozy morning, actually. I think uh, it's quite chilly in uh, Delhi and all. I was reading the news. So you're, you, I, I can see many familiar faces and joining from different parts of uh, the world. So thank you so much for taking your time out and uh, joining with us. We have one hour. So we will, uh, let me quickly take you through what we are going to cover today. This session is about well-being uh, of your children. It works in two ways. One is, you'll be in a better space. With your children. Second is when we say children, we are all children in a grown up body because uh, our behavior, our life, everything is driven by what we have observed, what we have picked, how we have been brought up. as children. So we, we call it uh, as an inner child. So through the session, you'll get an opportunity to connect back to your inner child, which will help you have a better relationship with your parents. And when you work uh, on your relationship with your uh, children or your parents, in a way, you are working out your relationship with yourself. What we're going to do is, I'll give you some concepts. And then I'll walk you through a quick guided meditation. I'm, I'm sure this uh, session recording will be there on YouTube. So you can use, I'll, I'll give you that uh, uh, guided meditation, which you can refer. I'll show you how to address the inner child, which you can use later to work on various inner children you have. Okay, all good. Uh, so I want you to quickly type in, uh, uh, get familiar with the chat box. So we will uh, have a Q and A session at the end. I'm, I'm uh, hoping that we'll be left with some time to attend to your questions. So what you can do is get familiar with the chat box by typing in. I want to understand how many of you are uh, between the age of one and ten. If you are between the age of 1 and 10, just type 1 if there are any children. And if you are uh, in the age bracket of 10 to 20, type 2. 20 to 30, type 3. 30 to 40, you can type 4. Okay, interesting. If you are in the age bracket of 40 to 50, you can type 5. 50 to 60, you can type 6. 
it, it will help me understand uh, and uh, how to take the session forward. Okay, okay, that's great. And if you are uh, 60 to 70, you can type seven and onwards, eight, eight and nine. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much for your response. All right. So we'll begin with uh, one concept, which is the, the important concept, uh, uh, if you look around, that's how the children are facing the sense of computation uh, today. Uh, whether it's uh, studies or sports, everywhere you look around, there is a sense of competition. This concept will help uh, you as well as help you guide your children to come to a point where we where they can uh, have a healthy competition with uh, themselves because the competition is going to be there. It's, it's the reality of the world. Uh, uh, why it's the reality? Because that's how we have been uh, growing for hundreds and hundreds of years. We look around and it's like a benchmark. When we say computation, you are what, what happens is you look around people, you create a benchmark for yourself, and then you come up with uh, uh, a goal, a target. So it gives you that reference. But the challenge, uh, you, you uh, um, if you have heard of uh, an athlete who broke a record of uh, 100 meters in certain seconds, until that, nobody has broken that record. But the moment he broke the record, next year, few few other people uh, also did the same. Because when we see people doing certain thing, it gives us a belief that we can also do that. It gives us that reference point and we believe in it and we create it. So competition is important, but there are some challenges with the competition. And this concept will help you overcome that. The challenge of competition is when you compete with somebody, you're comparing yourself. And when you compare yourself with somebody, there are certain things. You may feel good about yourself when the other person you're comparing is not doing uh, great. But when they are doing uh, pretty awesome, and if you feel that you cannot reach that point, you start feeling low about yourself. You cannot even perform at your uh, uh, peak potential when you feel low about yourself, not good, about, uh, good enough about yourself. So where does this competition start? See, usually we see that in schools. Uh, as uh, many children come together in a school, they start looking around and uh, it starts. But it starts much earlier than the school. It starts at home. If you have siblings, you're already in a mode of competition. And what are you competing towards? You're competing towards the love of your parents, the attention of your parents. There is a concept in psychology called uh, ordination, which defines, uh, which explains about uh, how your behavior will be if you're born in certain, uh, what's your number of birth? And uh, based on that, uh, uh, it, it has a significance. For example, uh, it's a generic thing. It's a ge general concept, may not be applicable for uh, everything and everybody, but it's important. Something like if you are uh, the first child, so all the experiments are done on you. Because the parents are new. And the first children, uh, I mean, the first child is also, um, not in all cases, but it's it's kind of favorite child because that that's the uh, that that's the first step uh, of parenthood. 
so they are connecting that bond they're feeling that love uh, and the moment second one born that takes birth usually the second one would be um, in some characteristics opposite to the first one if the first one is uh, first one is usually uh, compliant towards the parent as soon as the second one comes in they become rebellious why would they become rebellious because what they seek is the attention of attention and love of parents if there is already one person who has filled that position of being a compliant and good boy good girl and uh, they, so the way the second one uh, seeks attention is being uh, a little rebellious um and in that way the there are third and fourth position and there are certain uh, characteristics of uh, them as well like the third one is usually good with the peers so fourth one grows on its own just looking at the elders uh, there, there is a system in place already by the time the third and the fourth comes so they build their own characteristics now why i brought this up is the sense of competition starts from here seeking the love and attention of the parents and in some cases when where there is a single child they compete uh, it it becomes like uh, suppose in the child uh, um, there is a triangle where the attention um, where the uh, the child uh, and one partner uh, one uh, parent seeks the attention of the other so there is also a factor of attention and love the sense of competition begins from here as i brought up competition can help us in many ways it will give us a reference point it will give us um, certain things which we don't believe we can do if we see somebody doing it it, it brings up that uh, belief that we can also do it and progress it and uh, now how can uh, and and uh, this is what i'm uh, the, the things i'm talking about are um, still around healthy competition but there are points where people uh, feel extremely stressed because of competition they quit it has gone to the stages where people even commit uh, suicide in worst cases where they feel that they are not able to cope up with the pressure of competition there are so many uh, 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 children who prepare for uh, iits and iams and uh, what not they feel uh, they go through so uh, i recently read a news where some boy has uh, committed suicide because he couldn't tolerate the pressure uh... now just imagine if you are living in a village where there are uh, only one person who is going to the school in some other place so this boy would never feel that uh, kind of uh, pressure to compete with anybody because he is already in a better space boy or a girl when you are competing for a seat when you are competing for a job when you are competing for uh, something uh, which is like uh, um scarce it, it it's uh, where you have one seat and 100 uh, aspirants then then the stress increases it depends upon so basically this sense of competition in extreme cases can be generated out of lack if you have any questions you can type uh, in between uh, we will take them up as uh, we go through so now uh, the sense of competition is directly proportional to what is available so if there are less number of seats and more number of people are competing uh, towards it there is more stress and how can you and this is the reality of present world you cannot say that uh, i will not uh, uh, study or i will not uh, do certain things because you are uh, unconsciously in a mode of competition we keep it uh, calling rat race but we are already there 
you have to study, you, have, you want to get into a good college, there are already people who are studying uh, you know, throughout the night. But how can you do better in the existing system? Now, competition can be out of lack and it can also be out of a different consciousness. which is of consciousness of abundance. Believing that there is enough for everybody. Everybody will get an opportunity. Everybody will have something. But at the same time, you also need to improve yourself. Just imagine why the sense of uh, uh, competition is given to humanity. So that they keep striving, they keep learning, they keep growing, they keep moving on. You you are in uh, uh, first standard, you're learning uh, alphabets. You're in second, you're learning sentences. You're in third, you, you are progressing. You're not stuck anywhere. You're learning new things. So one thing is we will keep, uh, uh, we need to keep this fire of learning growing and evolving on all the time. How can you do it? You can do it with an awareness that I have learned this. So how can I make myself better next year? I have this skill. I have acquired this. How can I do something better? If you are an actor, I have performed certain role. How can I show my skills in another role? How can I do it better? How can I speak? How can I act? If you're an artist, if you're painting, you can ask yourself, how can I use more colors? How can I? So it, it is the constant way of growing. It, it's like enhancement. You have certain thing where you are uh, improving at the same time you're saying that you have certain skills. Uh, what happens in competition? You say, I don't have this, or I want to have, which I don't uh, have, and you focus, in, focus on getting that. But here, what you're doing is, I have this. Conscious of abundance is, I have this. I am enjoying this. I'm happy with this. Can I do something better? Can I improve on this? Can I enhance this? So you're not looking around, yet you're growing, you're focusing. And uh, as children, if you have gone through a strong sense of competition with your siblings, usually that get cascaded to your children. Because you are already in that uh, mode of competition uh, where you are uh, comparing your children with others. They, this is a very common thing. Uh, some people do it out of uh, ignorance of their incompletions. And some do it to increase their children. When we say, see, that, uh, th that friend of you is scoring so much. Uh, so some people do it. Some parents do it to inspire their children to do better. What you can do is, first you start recognizing the uniqueness in your children. That's when you'll be able to break the stress of competition. Every child is unique. Your child is unique. He or she has certain gifts, certain talents. You just need to step back from being a parent for a moment and observe your child, what is unique about your child. If you keep comparing, you'll never be able to realize how unique your, is your child. And if you cannot recognize that uniqueness, you'll not be able to help your child to recognize that uniqueness in them. Because your child, your children are looking up to you. If you start acknowledging their uniqueness, 
they will start connecting to that uniqueness strongly. I, I see uh, a majority of uh, women on this group. So if I can give you an example of, uh, see, uh, I, I don't know if uh, women like to cook or not, but they usually love to cook for their children because that is innate. That that's a innate desire to nourish their children, nurture their children. Now, if you're cooking food, you can go into ways. You can look at uh, something your neighbor has cooked or some article online where they are sharing a recipe and you can start comparing yourself with them saying, uh, how is your food? It doesn't uh, look better than that. It doesn't taste better than the food your neighbor has cooked. Here you're comparing, you can do that. But if you start, and the moment we start comparing, it doesn't come, uh, uh, it's not isolated. The moment you say your neighbor is cooking better than you, you're not, uh, you, you have gone, already gone beyond that uh, uh, comparison between the foods. You already started comparing them with some inner child of you, saying that your neighbor is better than you. And it brings up all the memories where your uh, parents said that see your brother is better than you, your sister is better than you, your cousin is better than you, or your friend is better than you. So all those things come up and you start feeling not so good about uh, cooking. Food is just an excuse. So it is connecting to that part of you which is not feel, feeling good enough. So the other way to go around it is, you say I've cooked this food, can I make it better next time? Now you know you are in a different zone. Can I try something new? If you are in this zone, if a neighbor makes a good food, you will cherish it, you will enjoy it. You will probably ask them how did they make it so that you can also make it. You are in a learning zone. You are in experiencing life in a different uh, zone. Is it making sense? And the same applies to your children. Just focus on what best thing they have. And help them be better with that. If they are uh, scoring 10 marks out of 100, ask them if they can score 12. Can you help them to score 15? Because every child is, uh, everybody come up with certain potential. You cannot just say that uh, if that child has the potential to score a certain thing, you will make them the best scientist in the world. That is a possibility, but uh, not always. What you can do is when you approach from this saying that, uh, can you do it better? you're at least making sure that they are reaching the potential, maximum potential they have at that point of time. Because they start feeling lighter. The moment they start feeling lighter, they'll do the best they can do at that point of time. One statement, uh, radical statement, which is a simple statement which you can use, is I recognize the uniqueness in my child. You can apply the same statement for yourself where you can say, I recognize the uniqueness in me. Okay. So this is one concept. Uh, and uh, I, I told you the general things. One, one byproduct of uh, extreme competition is jealousy. Because at certain point, uh, when you are uh, competing, when you are comparing, and when you see that you cannot reach that point, uh, invariably jealousy come up. So you have lost, lost touch with your uh, uniqueness. Now you are worried about, uh, you are jealous about others. And if you are in a good position and you have lost uh, 
touch with your uniqueness, you start inviting jealousy from others. I, I get to hear with uh, so many of my clients that they are afraid to open up because they, they feel that somebody would get jealous of them. And they live a subdued life because of this fear of being uh, jealous. You stay in touch with your uniqueness. The moment you stay in touch with your, your uniqueness, you stop comparing yourself with others. And when you do that, you will stop inviting people in your space who are comparing themselves with you. Or at least they won't compare if they can. They may compare themselves with others, but at least they won't compare themselves with you because you are not reflecting that energy. And when somebody is not comparing, there is no point of jealousy. It's like a soccer player and a football, I mean, a soccer player and a cricket player. They may be uh, very good in their uh, fields, but they don't need to compare themselves. Uh, so stay in touch with your uniqueness. You will overcome the need for all these jealousy and uh, betrayals and whatnot is involved with that. Okay, let's move on to the next concept. How many of you watch movies? Raise your hand if you can. Let's see. Okay. And what happens? Thanks, Arti. Thank you so much. Uh, raise your hand. Let me know that uh, you are with me. We are together going on. Uh, you're getting what I'm trying to share. Thank you, Purba Dani. So, when you watch movie, thank you, Sophie. Ethel, appreciate it. So, what happens when you watch a movie? invariably you start connecting to the characters. You start feeling, if it's a, if it's a good movie, thank you, thank you, Samina. If it's a good movie, you start connecting to the characters. And uh, most of the time, what do you connect? Do you connect with a hero or heroine? Or do you connect with somebody standing in the corner, in the audience? It's obvious, right? You connect to the hero. Of the story because you are the hero of your life. Why do we get attracted to a hero or a heroine or the main character of that movie? Can somebody type in? Why do you why do you generally get attracted uh, or feel that you are that? Because uh, millions of people are watching the same movie and everybody is feeling that they are the prime character in the movie. That's how you can relate to it. That's how you can connect to it. Because there is one important aspect of every hero, heroine or a main character. They are leading. That's why we call them leading characters. Now tell me how many of uh, you would want your children to follow our lead? If you want your children's children to follow type 2, if you want your children to lead type 1, let's say, if you want your children to lead type 1, And if you want your children to follow, type two. Interesting, huh? <laughs> I hardly see two. I don't see two, <laughs> not even hardly. All right. So what is that one quality needed to be a good leader? You can type it. What is that one quality needed to be a leader? There are several qualities. 
integrity. Thank you. Being humble. Thank you, Ambika. Confident, being confident. Thank you, Nilo. Take everyone together. Awesome. Thank you, Shikha. Integrity, faith in yourself, good demonstrative, consistency, beautiful, decision-taking ability, uniqueness, amazing, motivation, sincerity, leadership, charisma, authenticity. Wow. Beautiful. Being rational, yeah. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. So what we are going to do now is touch upon that one quality which is needed. As you see, there are uh, so many qualities which make up a leader. One important quality is if you want to lead somebody, you need to have vision. Right? Because if you have a vision, then you can lead somebody in a certain direction. If you are not sure where you are going, it's difficult to lead others. Or you can lead into a pit. Definitely you can lead, but it, you can lead, in there, lead them somewhere else. If you want to lead them in a direction which you believe in, there has to be a vision. That's why we call people as visionaries the important leaders of the world or somebody who's running a company or somebody who's directing a movie or somebody. So they are all directing people towards a, they are taking people towards a direction. For that, important is having visions. And having visions is closely connected to being imaginative. It's not daydreaming. Because, uh, just imagine, you are uh, into a pro project. You are leading towards uh, creating a beautiful product. Now, whatever new innovations have come up, it's not there. You are leading people, but you are not yet there. So, what fills the gap is the visions of the leader to take them to something which is still not there. And what helps them is their ability to visualize, their ability to imagine. When you have young children, so many times we do that. When they are uh, uh, being imaginative, we say, don't dream, look at the reality. This is a gift. That imagination is a gift which you can cultivate in children. I, I'm, I'm, I'll take you to the point where I'm saying there is a difference between daydreaming and uh, imagination. Both work at the mind level, both work in the same way. But how you apply makes a difference. So many inventions, even the invention of... Uh, uh, rocket was inspired by some um, novel by somebody. Um, it, it's the imagination which made us reach to the moon. And somebody has to think that that is a possibility. Otherwise, nobody is like, uh, sit down and say, I'll make a rocket and go to moon. Science backs it up. Facts backs it up. Data supports it. But that Imagination, visualize, visualization helps. That, that's like an intention. Now, if your children are young, help them to visualize. I'll come to the point where how it helps you in the metaphysical world as well, but right now on the ground reality. Just imagine your uh, child came running to you. And, and this is a quality which is like uh, very important when you are between the age of, uh, within the within eight or 10 years. You can be imaginative at 90 also, that, that that's uh, natural to humans, but the, the uh, senses are strong when you are young. How you can help uh, your children being uh, imaginative? 
um, that dreamer when they are young and yet ground them is by you know, uh, before I tell this, how many of you want your children to be clever than you are better than you raise your hand let's see do you want your children to be as good as you are or do you want them to be better better it's a it's a natural instinct that a uh, future progeny we want it to be better advance so if your child comes to you and asks a question, don't give an answer. If you answer your child, you are limiting their knowledge to the knowledge you have. But ask a counter question, which will help them expand their imagination not limit their imagination to the knowledge you have. For example, uh, just think. You're there and uh, it's, it's, when, you, when, you, when your children uh, uh, are young, they come up this uh, common imagination that like, uh, I'll, I'll take you for shopping. I, I'll buy you this thing. It, it's a natural thing uh, kids follow. So if your kid uh, comes running to you and say, I'll buy you something rather than saying yes or no you ask them uh, a counter question ask them uh, how do you take me to the shop you'll be amazed when the children are young they don't stop they will come up with some answer they will never say no i don't know they will come up with they will cook something up so they may say i'll uh, drive you to that shop and ask them do you know how to drive? They will explain all the driving to you. I ask them, how will you park the car? Or I ask them. So these questions will help them open up, expand uh, their thought process. And when their uh, visions are strong, and, and you're not just uh, daydreaming, you're ask, asking them some practical questions as well, but open-ended questions, where there is a scope for them to visualize, imagine, create that scene in their mind. And as I said, it is strongly connected to the metaphysical world as well. Because what we say, your subconscious mind is a place from where you can manifest uh, this life, the things you want in life. You can refer to thousand books with lot of data, which uh, uh, prove time and again um, about this beautiful machine inside you, the subconscious mind, which can help you manifest beautiful things in your life, beautiful relationships in your life. Because when you are visualizing, you are affirming, you are creating that. Uh, uh, your subconscious mind is like that uh, soil where what in which whatever seed you put, it will grow. So when you visualize good things, you create them in your reality. Uh, Dani is saying, I don't have children, but I want the future generation to be better uh, and myself to be better. And that's wonderful. Uh, see, we are, we are talking about children here, but the same energy goes for your projects. The same energy goes towards your business. The same energy because they, they are your children. So how you feel towards children, you feel towards a lot of uh, things in the world, uh, the, the energy wise. So being better uh, uh, in your space is when you start healing these inner children, you start feeling better. You start feeling whole and complete. Then you align to your life purpose. Then you feel better about yourself. Uh, you will be in a better space than you are now. I'll take you to that uh, guided meditation. We have uh, 20 minutes. I think uh, 10, 15 minutes are uh, good enough for the meditation. I, so that meditation you can keep using and uh, that will help you stay um, 
that that will help you address those inner children who are angry who are sad who are grieving because that's what is getting reflected so see uh, many times uh, you yell at your children you scream at your children and all of a sudden you will realize uh, um, that what did you do maybe when you are uh, Mm. when you step out of that situation you wonder uh, what uh, got into you to behave in a certain way that is your inner child what, what is imprinted you on you as a child you are behaving in the same way towards your children many of my clients say i was averse towards how my parents uh, brought me up and you'll wonder what they say next they say i never wanted to be my parent but now when i'm parenting i looks like i am parenting in the same way these parental incompletions go through generations and generations okay if you are here in this space you are you have an opportunity to break that okay all right let's uh, go through this meditation i had one more uh, concept it it's little big but i'll quickly try to touch upon it not go in depth now this is about the importance of attachment now, you can look into it dig into it more because this is very 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 crucial uh, thing if you understand this concept lot of things in your uh, life are going to be smooth okay this is called uh, attachment so attachment is something which is uh, very much necessary for all of us this is the energy like uh, you, you have a gynecologist delivering uh, hundreds of babies uh, in a year with all the care all the love she delivers the she or he delivers the babies but when you are a parent when you are holding the newborn baby what you feel is different than what the doctor is feeling towards the baby the difference is the attachment what you have towards that uh, child because it's your own it's your essence we usually speak about being detached but it that that's not uh, easy detachment uh, out of awareness is difference different and being indifferent is another thing so if you want to be detached that comes from an understanding that you are everything you are the extension of everything and everything is the extension of you but till that time attachment is going to be there in your life we usually refer uh, attachment to clinginess and there are there are several perceptions uh, that i don't want to get attached i want unconditional space all, all these things are from the beliefs that attachment restricts you binds you as i told about the competition it's difficult to run away from the competition same applies it is difficult to run away from the attachment what you can do is you can improve the health of your attachment because uh, everybody is attached to something or the other in life you you think of uh, some saints or monks who are who have gone uh, beyond the body they could also be attached to the concept of god or enlightenment so attachment is there you could be attached to your pet you could be attached to your gadgets you could be attached to a loved one you could be attached to your children attachment is the essence how can you improve the health of attachment so there are certain concepts again in the psychology which talks about uh, your how your childhood experiences frame your sense of attachment if as a child you your mother your father attended to you they were always there when you needed them that creates a foundation of secure attachment 
Secure attachment is something that you feel secured inside. When we call people are secured, emotionally secured, it's that blueprint which has got created as children, which is saying that uh, there will be somebody when I need them. Okay. And uh, this, when, when you are in this zone, you don't cling on to people. You don't cling on to anything because you are sure that whenever you need, you will have them. That's the beautiful place to be in. If you are not in this zone, you probably need to work a little to come to that zone because there are uh, several uh, incidents from childhood which has brought you to this point. Second is uh, people who get attached in an anxious way. These are the people where uh, the parents were not around when they needed them. This happens with uh, uh, many where they are uh, working, where they are uh, parents are working, where there, there is uh, um, uh, absence for uh, hours and hours. And, and the, this creates an anxiety in children, which, which keeps growing when, uh, with, as they grow up, which is like, um, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if there is somebody for me. And this is a, uh, these are the people who get clingy because there is a fear of losing people. If you fall into any zone, there is nothing to worry about. There is nothing bad about it. It's just the experience you have got as children and that can be attended, that can be reversed uh, with awareness. You can go back, connect to those inner children, heal them and tell them that uh, you are secured now. You are uh, uh, you can take care of yourself. And it, it, it's a process that will happen. Um, there are several uh, programs in radical uh, free programs. So you can... Uh, Make use of them. You can get in touch with uh, Atman or the um, uh, uh, CNI is here. Uh, uh, by the way, just uh, take me, let me take a moment to thank all the staff and Atman for creating this beautiful platform where we are able to share this uh, uh, with whatever uh, 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 simple knowledge we have. It's, it's an opportunity to share uh, that with you. So thank you so much. Stena, Atman, Deepa, and many more. Uh, Swagat, uh, who supported uh, Sartha, Kuma. Uh, I, I can keep counting. Shazia, thank you so much uh, for your wonderful uh, work. Renu, Arthi, <laughs> the list goes on because these there are a lot of volunteers who have uh, worked day in, day out to create this platform. Okay, so let me... Uh, thank you, Atman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being that visionary to create this platform. Because of your visions, this has come up. We appreciate that. It's like the child who makes parents or my parents make children. The followers. <laughs> Thank you. It's quite deep if you ponder upon it later. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, uh, quickly, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I think I'm taking more time. We have a session at nine as well, right? Uh, so I'll yes, take... You have time and it's my session. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'll take two minutes to complete this concept and quickly take them through a guided meditation. Please, this is more important than uh, adult session uh, because uh, our children are nations uh, assets. So if anything that we can do for children, that would be amazing. Please carry on little Beautiful. more no problem. If you have a content and if you have something planned, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. So uh, as I was saying that anxiety, what uh, it gets created in you that you're going, you're going to lose parents is coming from your childhood. You can attend to that. You can uh, uh, address that child which uh, didn't have somebody to support in need of time. Third is uh, you come across these people who are uh, quite confused about their feelings. They want somebody in life. They want, they want that love, attention, and they don't want to be attached. Uh, they are uh, uh, very loving one moment and uh, extremely angry the other moment. This is also not their fault. This is a child which has experienced 
parents uh, uh, where the source of love and anger has come from the same uh, source. If you have uh, felt extreme love from father and uh, at some point the same father is extremely angry, you get confused about your own feelings. You don't know how to react. You feel loved, you feel threatened. So that's the people who are confused about their own feelings. You can go back to your childhood, find a balance between that anger and love and come to a point. Uh, in this meditation, I will take you to that process where you can uh, uh, recognize um, because what parents have done to you is nothing but that, their inner child, which was incomplete from their parents. Now, if you look at yourself being a parent, uh, there are so many moments where you, you regret, uh, um, uh, which, you, which you have done towards your parents, I mean, children. It's a chain, it's a cycle. You have an inner child, you have a parent, you are an inner child and a parent. And uh, these incompletions you can break by being little compassionate towards your inner child as well as extending that compassion towards your parents because what they did, you will only understand when you become a parent um, because um, judging is easy, but when you become a parent, you will understand how tough it is. Last is, uh, we call it ambivalent, uh, which is if as a child, Imagine you are angry and there was no scope to express that anger or you were being punished for being that. Then you start suppressing that expression because you feel if you express something, you will be punished. You'll uh, that, that is not a right thing to do. And that makes you uh, kind of indifferent towards your own feelings. Though you have the feelings, you kind of suppress them. I'll, I'll bring up one point and I'll close uh, uh, with this. One is, see, uh, children, when they are young, more than anything in the world, they long for that love and attachment from parents. And they can do anything for that. For example, uh, if you are uh, angry as a child and that made you feel rejected by your father or mother saying that it is not the right thing to do, you will learn to suppress that anger because uh, you are seeking that love and if, if you uh, want to choose between that love and uh, your own feelings of being angry, you will uh, uh, nine out of ten times you will choose to suppress your anger. In that way, there are many things which we suppress. Uh, that, that is being true, true uh, uh, to ourselves, true to our feelings. And when you suppress anger, there are many studies which support this. When you suppress anger, your immunity goes down. It leads to many autoimmune diseases. So allow your children to express themselves. There are better ways for you to handle their emotions. But the moment you shut them down, they start shutting down because they don't want to lose you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a minute quickly and then we'll get on with the meditation. Okay. If you have, uh, if you want to grab water, you can grab water. Uh, we'll start in a minute. All right. 
Okay, I want you to quickly close your eyes. Before we start the meditation, I want you to recognize one inner child which you want to address. For example, take that inner child, one inner child who is uh, probably angry with mother or father or who is sad, who is grieving. One child, one inner child. How can you recognize? Close your eyes. And say, I recognize my inner child. I recognize my inner child. Or you can start by recognizing your parents. You now, for now, you pick uh, either mother or father. Later, you can apply the same method and do it, okay? So, think of your mother or father you want to improve your relationship with. Close your eyes and just repeat, I recognize you several times. At least seven times, I recognize you. I recognize you. I recognize you. I recognize you. And ask your subconscious mind to connect to that aspect of you which is either angry, sad, resenting towards your father or mother. If, if there is no such personality coming up, it's absolutely fine. But if it is coming up, just recognize the age of the child. You can pick a number. Maybe you were uh, extremely angry on your uh, mother when you were 8 years old, 15 years old. Whatever age comes to you, it's absolutely fine. Mm. It's absolutely fine if you are grown up and uh, you were extremely angry yesterday also. That also creates an inner child. Now let's go through the meditation. Imagine yourself. Sitting. Take all your awareness, attention to your physical body around your nostrils. Take a deep breath in. Breathing through your nose. Hold it for a couple of seconds and slowly breathe out. And when you breathe out, observe each and every cell in your body is getting into a deeper and deeper state of relaxation. This time is for yourself. Nobody wants anything. Nobody needs anything. So just allow yourself to relax. Now visualize slowly. Your energy body moving out of your physical body and slowly moving towards a lift lobby. Stand in front of the lift. Visualize you being on the fifth floor. Press the button. Visualize the lift door opening up, walk into the lift. It's a very cozy place, very airy, very comfortable. You feel extreme comfort in the lift. Press zero. This lift will take you into the depths of your subconscious mind. Slowly observe this lift moving down. And with each floor, you get into a deeper and deeper state of relaxation. Four, three, lift, lift is on the third floor, helping you to get into a deeper state of relaxation. Two, one, and zero. 
visualize the door opening up and it opens into a hallway. which has rooms on both the left and the right side. Slowly start walking through this hallway. All these rooms hold different kinds of memories. You can see different nameplates on the doors of these rooms. You keep walking and on the right side you'll find a door which holds all the memories you have built with your parents. Slowly open the door and walk into a very cozy, comfortable room. You are in charge of this room. Nobody can enter this room without your permission. Slowly walk into this room and visualize a big room which has furniture as per your liking. You feel extremely comfortable, happy to visit this room. Slowly start walking. And you will find a small platform, a circular platform at the center of this room. And observe, chairs are put in a circular manner around this platform. Take your position on one of the chairs. And invite the supportive energies. You can call them masters, you can call them angels, you can call, call them guides. These are the fragments of your energy which are helping you, which are guiding you. Invite them to occupy the seats in this circle. And as they take their position, Invite that inner child which came up when you recognize your parents. This could be an extremely angry child, a sad child, or the child which felt unloved. Let it show up on the platform. Tell this child that you are safe. You're perfectly all right in this space. Recognize this child on the platform. I recognize you. I recognize you. I recognize you. Allow this child to express what it truly feels. Let it feel sad if it is feeling sad. Let it be angry if it is feeling angry. And when you recognize the child, call that parent. Both the parents are the parent because of which this child is feeling extremely sad or angry or unloved. Tell the child there is no need to be afraid, sad. As the parent shows up. Allow the child to express whatever it wants to express to the parent.
and when the child is expressing its true feelings to the parent, invite that inner child of the parent which made the parent behave in certain way. and allow it to join the parent and your inner child on the platform. Now allow your inner child to recognize the inner child of your parent because of which you felt sad or angry. you can support along with this circle of higher beings by saying the statement, I recognize this inner child. I recognize my parents' inner child. I recognize my parents' inner child. You can use a set of radical statements which will help you truly see the inner child of the parent, your parent, which made you feel angry or sad. I see this inner child. I feel this inner child. I acknowledge this inner child. I love and accept this inner child. I honor this inner child. There is a brilliance in this inner child. I am this inner child and this inner child is me. See yourself being supported by the transmission of energy from the beings sitting in the circle, the higher beings, your angels, your masters, the energy is supporting you. See a beam of light going into these inner children, which will help the inner child of your parent to integrate in your parent. And as it happens, you'll find it easy to forgive your parent appearance because you see that all that they have done is out of ignorance, out of their incompletions. As this awareness sets in, observe your inner child slowly coming towards you. Allow it to come closer to you. Hold its hands. Slowly. Touch his heads. Touch his head. Its shoulders. Caress with love and say, I recognize you. It's all right to express your true feelings. It's all right to be sad. It's all right to be angry. I'm here to take care of you. And allow this inner child of you to slowly integrate in you. I extend your gratitude to all the beings, your parent, parents in this room. And slowly start walking out of the room, feeling whole and complete, feeling much better than how you entered this room. This is a safe and sacred space which you can enter at any point of time to find a completion, to feel good about yourself. Slowly walk, open the door. Close the door behind you. 
walk through the hallway, come towards the lift, press the number five, see the door opening, walk into the lift. As the lift starts moving up, you will start feeling brighter, energized, positive, more whole and complete. Slowly lift coming up on the first floor, second, third, fourth, fifth floor, slowly walk out of the lift, walk towards your physical body, allow this energy being to integrate in you. As it integrates, you feel much more energized, rejuvenated, healthy, whole and complete. Take a deep breath in, move your fingers, move your toes, rub your palms, give that heat to your eyes. Slowly come back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Grab some water. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity and I'm sorry, I'm uh, 10 minutes overboard. Thank you, Mujib. An hour wasn't enough. That was an amazing experience. We have so much to learn, unlearn. And your valuable insights have been very encouraging. And we hope to improve our relationship with our children, parents, and more importantly, ourselves. We have so much to take back from this session. Thank you once again. And thank you all for your active participation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.